One, two, three, do it. Oh, Case on a deep drop, steps up in the pocket. He'll fire to the right side, caught by Diggs. Stay up, oh, 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 oh my God! Oh my God! No way! Touchdown! Oh. Are you kidding me? No finish! It's a Minneapolis miracle! All right, all right, we're coming back in to the Sculptures Podcast, coming off of a tasty Victory Monday. Indeed. How are you feeling today, Mike? Feel, well, I mean, Victory Monday, baby. You got to feel good. It's exciting. Um, good things are coming, man. Yeah. Good things. Vikings, of course, following the 49ers. What did you say this morning? They uh, what, what didn't they find here? They did not find any gold. They didn't, they didn't find no gold here. No gold at the bank. They fall 24-16. Against ours, our Minnesota Vikings. They did. Um, before we get into the breakdown of the game, though, let's take a look around the week here and see kind of uh, what surprised us today, or yesterday, rather. Um, kind of what the heck went on, because there was yeah. a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, there's some, uh, you know, some games broke, I think, definitely the way we thought. Um, the Vikings game actually being probably one of the, the more accurate uh, right. predictions we had, but that's that's a good thing because that means maybe we do actually have a handle on the team that we podcast about multiple times. The Vikings week, so. are who we thought they were. Um, yeah, so, I, I mean, I guess I was talking with you. Um, obviously, there's a couple things that really jumped out. Uh, first and foremost might be the Tampa Bay Bucks uh, going into what I thought, what, what I predicted as the other NFC championship team, the Saints, uh, mostly because I thought their defense had improved, and hanging a 48 spot with Ryan Fitzpatrick. I mean, this this is exactly how everyone expected this to go across the league, Mike. I mean, I don't know why we decided to buck that trend. Deshaun Jackson scored. Everyone was picking the Tampa Bay Bucks to win this game. Ooh. Um, I well, we we looked at uh, what was it around halftime or something like that or third quarter. It's like 48 to 24 and we're like what in the heck happened here and of course i benched mike evans in all fantasy formats because you know last year he struggled against Lattimore uh mightily and And how many points did he have on the bench ejected he had 27 um Mm. so yeah it cost me in in one league for sure and possibly two but um bucks i don't know what do you so they have i I don't want to get too deep into the Jameis winston (laughs) controversy here but uh, there had already been kind of rumors that maybe they, they were done with Winston, and now Fitzpatrick comes in and they throw up a forty-eight spot, a team that we, right. you know, okay. what, are, what are you thinking? But for one, okay, first things first, pump the brakes a bit, kid. Okay, okay. Well, <laughs> forty-eight is no uh, forty-eight no bomb. Joke. You know, in any other week, I would say, all right, this this could be a concern. Week one, divisional game, especially all divisional games are. I, I pretty much throw the book out the window. Okay. You never know how those things play out, right? You you play play each other so often. Yeah. Um. There's just so much nuance you pick up playing playing each other twice a year like that. So immediately there, <laughs> books out the window. Yeah. You you hope the Saints can go ahead and take care of business, but for whatever reason they were just exposed on something they didn't realize. Probably um, a lot of uh, unhappy people in in the loser pool pick them. Uh, I would assume that was a popular pick this week. I I, uh, I have a friend that's gonna pick them for money, and I I, I just kind of steered them away from this game. I'm like, no, if I was you, I'd probably pick Detroit. It's a low key game; they should win at home. Oh, you, okay. They gotta pick a winner. Yeah, they gotta yeah. pick a winner. I'm like, it's a low key game. Pick Detroit. All right, pick that to win. Make that your lock because first week this is rough. I went, uh, but Detroit's relatively safe. So I'm in one where you gotta pick the loser. Um, and I, you can have two entries, and I took San Fran, San Fran. Uh, so I rolled the dice on double on San Fran. Double San Fran. Well, you can double it up. Well, yeah, because it, it, they're like it's like independent entries. Basically. Okay, I got so, you. I got you. Um, but yeah, so that was a little bit shocking. Um, and then another big shocker, probably more so for you, would be the Washington Redskins going into Arizona. And uh, I mean, this one wasn't really close. Twenty-four to six. Uh, alone, David Johnson, sad touchdown, which probably helped fantasy you know, owners late. But I, I, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to claim the same rule I just did before. It's first game of the season. Kind of bets are off at that point. Okay. Um, Adrian Peterson is obviously having a coming out party there. So, you know, props to him. 
Hope he does well. Just don't do well against my Vikings. We'll be fine. Okay. Um, but you know what? There's plenty of season left. There's 15 games left. Yeah. But I'd like to point out, though, at this point, the Browns have a better record than the Saints and the Cardinals and the Chargers and the Cowboys and the Seahawks and the Bears. A lot, a lot of teams. They have a better record than a lot of teams right Damn now. Damn it, Bears. <sighs> what the hell, Bears? Come on. I suppose we could touch on that. Bears blew a 20-point uh, second-half lead. Aaron Rodgers went into the locker room. Uh, sounds like some sort of an MCL issue, or it looked like it. Um, I, I don't know if that's you know what? officially been released or not, but it, it certainly looked like an MCL error. It came back anyway, um, and you know the rest. He did Aaron Rodgers things, and, and they end up winning. I, I uh, believe, by the way, this was... This was my prediction that I texted to you, like, I don't know, an hour before kickoff, or a couple hours before kickoff Sunday, that it was going to be late late game Aaron Rodgers heroics that oh, yeah. went it. Well, I mean, like I said, I, I mean, <laughs> our thing was Bears are a much improved team. I think yes. you saw that. Um, I, you know, I I don't know what, what they were doing play calling in that second half. Well, it, and Trubisky looked like a rookie in the second half, which was really weird. I mean, he just, if, if he was rushing throws. He was going to the first read. There were other players open. Um, well, just that defense, too. Like, the defense kind of fell on its its face the second half. Yeah. I, I, I mean, don't know what changed. on the Randall Cobb, it's like, yeah. what, uh, or the lack thereof. Uh, Khalil Mack, though, man, that, that's wow. not going to be fun to play against him for the next handful of years, huh? Yeah, not twice a year. The only, the only benefit there is everyone else in the division has to as well. Yeah. So, I mean... But that series now is looking more like it's going to be you hope for a split and take the home game. Yeah. And maybe you get lucky, you take the away game. Yeah. Um, so Green Bay moves to 1-0. and um, Bears actually dropped an interception that was hit a guy right in the chest at the Saw that. end of the game. Saw that. Uh, and still could have sealed it, but uh, unfortunately did not. So but you know what? But, showdown. But that's, that's how it is with up-and-coming teams. They're making some of these mistakes now. Yeah, but they'll they'll take care of it. That's a mental rep. They're just gonna be like, eh, okay, I'm not gonna do that again, yeah. you know. And then next year they're not making those mental errors or a lot fewer of them. And now you see, you know, the vaunted Bears defense again. Yep. Yep. So one and zero, one and zero. It sets up a, a, a clash of, you know, what most would consider the. If anyone claims this is for the NFC North this next game, I'm blocking you on Twitter. So just don't even try. Well, yeah. No, I mean, certainly it is for the lead in the North after two it's, weeks. It's for the lead, uh, but it, it does not decide the division in no, week two. No, it's a big game. Um, I think especially for the Vikings, if you can go in and, and get that road win against Green Absolutely. Bay. Absolutely. Um, but that'll be a it's fun important. show, the, the Packer preview show, which will come out a little bit later this week. And I, I think that's uh, the first time in quite a while we've played the Packers at Packers this early in the season. Yeah. No, where I, it hasn't been like, you know... The tundra and Tundra December, or like, yeah. like 40, 50 degrees where it's still pretty cold to yep. play. Um, so yeah, excited for that game. I think uh, obviously road games are away, but are, are tough. But you know, it's a uh, it, it's one that's definitely winnable with the team we have. Definitely winnable. No, we'll, we'll get no. into that. That's that's no. next podcast. Um, I don't know. Other if Ravens hung a forty-seven on the Bills. Bills are going to be a very bad football team. Um, Steelers and Browns tied at twenty-one. Browns actually make a, a hell of a comeback. They didn't lose. They did not lose. This is their best record, you were telling me, since... Uh, 2004. This 2004. is their best start since 2004. I mean, just take a minute to comprehend that. Okay. Like I was saying, both me and you, we're, we're aging ourselves a little bit here, but we were still in a high school. Yeah. Right. That's the, Okay, that's the last time they started out 1-0. Beer fridges still locked. Still locked. Cleveland. Okay. Here's what I want to know. How many cops do they have on staff to be able to deal with that that absolute shit show that's going to happen when those things unlock? I don't know. Because that is going to be absolutely nuts. I, I, I do not want to be in that city when that happens. <laughs> okay, uh, let me rephrase it. I don't want to be in that city if that happens. Yeah. No, yeah. You're jumping ahead a little bit. Um, I don't know. That's mostly it. I thought Pat Mahomes looks like the real deal. Um, certainly electrified him and Tyreek Hill. Uh, they look like they're going to be a very dangerous um, combination there in the AFC West. Bengals kind of pulled out a, a late game yeah, win there. Yeah, I had picked them to win. Um, Colts were favored, which a lot of people thought was a weird line from, from Vegas. Uh, yeah, Deshaun, Colts were home, so I could see it, I guess. But. Yeah, uh, Deshaun Watson, a little bit of uh, 
Rust, I guess one could say they struggled. They, they managed to only lose by seven to the Patriots, but a um, little bit of rust. They, they fought back in that game. And then lastly, um, Giants, who a team I think I, I think I had making were they my last wild card, I think. Um, I think either so. way, I had them as a vastly improved team this year, and they actually showed quite a bit against the Jags. Uh, <coughs> they Odell, man, Odell is just unreal. He no, he's real. He should have torched Ramsey for even more, but Eli missed him multiple times in the end zone wide open. Um, so they end up losing by five to a, a very good Jags team, but I think the Giants showed up uh, for that game. So if they can just get a little, if, if Eli can figure it out just a little bit, and I know that's a big if, um, I look for the Giants to to make some noise in, in that division that I think is, Philly's a good team, but um, I, I think that they could, they could give them a little bit of trouble. You know, I'm drawing a, a couple of parallels here to uh, the you know Jacksonville Giants game to Vikings 49ers game. Two teams that that should win that game won that game, but right. they were closer than they should have been realistically, given where where you think the team's power level is based right. on last year. So um, just goes to prove to the other that uh, you're dealing with a couple teams that have some star power. They're getting better. But they're still they're not matured yet to the point where they don't make those mistakes right. and they don't close out games. Yeah. So, um, you know, that's, that's my thought on this. A lot of this was a lot of chaos that I didn't expect to be quite this chaotic. But. Yeah. No, I mean that's kind of a good wrap. We got a couple games here. Uh, I think the Jets and Lions are about to kick off in about a half hour, um, and then we got the Rams Raiders tonight. Um, a game that I'm not really expecting to be much of a game. Uh, We'll find I don't out. Know. That's week one. Pretty. I mean, it's what it is. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know. Now on to the fun stuff. Let's talk about your one and zero Minnesota Vikings taking care of business at home. Yes, absolutely. So, as you alluded to, the Vikings took care of business. Um, got out of there relatively clean, as far as injuries go. I think Waynes was the only one that we noted um, that got injured. It didn't look like it was super serious. He just kind of had a sleeve on it, so hopefully that's either he's in next week or it's only a couple-week deal. We'll we'll find out on that. Um, Mac obviously wasn't able to go. No. Um, so Let's hope he's – I mean, I would love if he's able to go week two. Uh, you can always use that depth against um, Rodgers, especially uh, Mac with a little bit of experience, um, which always helps because you know, you know yeah. if Hughes is in, you know Rodgers is going to – Try a couple now, and we're assuming that Rodgers is going to play. Um, they did just come out today and release that you know they're unsure, but let's be honest, he's playing in that football game. Right. Um, we'll get we'll get back to the secondary a little bit in that whole Rodgers matchup. Um, last thing I just want to mention before we get into the actual game analysis: uh, Collins moved to the IR. We signed in a guard that was with Kansas City last year. Yeah. Uh, the name escapes me currently, um, but. I guess the injury was serious enough where they said, yeah, we just want a different depth guy. Um, there's a question on this a little bit later from uh, a listener, so we, we can touch in a little bit more on that transaction, yeah. kind of what it means for the depth of the line. But a couple questions submitted this week. Yeah, so. we'll, we'll get to that a little bit later. But first off, Minnesota Vikings started out on offense with Kirk Cousins. All right. What, what do we feel about this Cousins start here? I'll, only two touchdowns, Mike. Uh, I loved it. Um, I thought Cousins really showed what I felt we were missing with Keenum. Um, and that was there were some absolute darts, and the football was thrown perfectly a lot of the time. Um, the touchdown pass to Diggs is one of the prettiest yeah. throws I've seen in a while. Uh, I mean, you just couldn't have placed yeah. it any better. It's kind of cool. I think it was his 100th passing touchdown. Which is cool. Yep. yep. Um, he threw an absolute BB to uh, Thielen later in the game. Thielen kind of found a way between a couple defenders, and he just right. And he had pressure him. right in his face yep. too. And he he just bullet that one out. So I mean, the ball, uh, you know, it it was thrown. I thought I thought he had a, a good game for game one in the new system, new right. receivers. Um, yeah, statistically, he was 20 for 36. He did have a couple drops. I, I heard um, he was 20 for 28 until his last eight passes were all incomplete. So it, which, maybe that's the coverage stiffened up. Maybe that's play calling kind of didn't work out the way yeah. he wanted to. Um, 
But yeah, I, I'm on the same page. Overall, I was very happy with that. That's kind of the way I expected that first game to go. He's not expected to do much in this game. No. Defense clearly took over this game. He just needed to make the throws, keep the, the chain moving, keep the clock ticking, and put up a couple scores where he needed. And yeah. we got him when we needed him, and we came out on top. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that um, you saw a defense have to respect the passing game a little bit more than they did last, all of last year. Um, it was noticeable. Uh, you, you know, I think you saw success in some other areas. Um, you know, I, I know that the running number individually for yardage wasn't, um, you know, it's not like Delvin ran for 150 um, or anything, but, we, you know, we had some nice runs, and, and uh, I really, I thought it was a balanced attack for the most part, um, and especially for week one, you know, with, with new players and, and a new offensive coordinator, just a lot of kind of moving pieces. Uh, I'm really happy overall, especially with Cousins, uh, on how he looked. And I, I mean, I'm excited. This is this is a step to where I think, he, you know, he's going in the right direction. Sure. Absolutely. 100% agree. Um, it only gets better from here, I think. Yeah, if, if 244, two TDs and no picks is considered, you know, just an average or, or not even a great game, we're going to be feeling wonderful come uh, the end of the year. Perfect. Continue that set line every game. Yeah. Or win a lot of football games. I mean, that's a good game from Keenum last year, you know. And I know yeah. statistics don't tell the whole story, uh, but I mean, protected that's... it when he needed to, made some critical third down pickups. Yep. Um, that fourth and one, that hard count, delicious. We have haven't been able to do that since Brett Favre was playing for us. That oh my gosh, that was a beautiful thing. Stadium went nuts on that. That yeah. was great. <laughs> um, so anyway, we talked. We touched just touched on a little bit. Uh, Delvin Cook. Yeah. Comes back in. First three plays went to Delvin Cook. Yeah. I think it was a run, a little dink pass, and then another run. So clearly, he's not. he didn't look like he was on a pitch count to me. No. looked like he was primed and ready to go. Yeah. Uh, 16 carries for 40 yards. He threw in another six catches for 55 on seven targets. Um, so, you know, what I mean, roughly that's 22, 23, 24-ish right in there. Uh, plays that are designed to go to him. Um, that's a pretty good number. I mean, uh, even when they're really going, you're not going to get too much higher than that. So, I mean, that's basically a full load for Dalvin right out the gate. Like you said, they went boom, 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 boom. Um, and I thought he looked explosive. Uh, again, statistically, 16 for 40 is a two and a half average. I realize if you just came and looked at a box score, you're going to think, oh, man, he really struggled to get it going. But he had some really yeah. nice hard runs. And that's, um, that's one where definitely the stat sheet is very deceiving because yeah. he had some nice runs. There's a couple issues, I think, with the O-line block and run blocking, but overall, I think it was fairly adequate with what was going on. Yeah, I mean, his that run that he fumbled on, man, that was one of the nicer runs I've seen in, in quite a while. I mean, it, probably going back to AP from, from right. a run like that. I mean, it featured a little bit of everything, and he's a little just bit a of power, monster a little bit to of take cut. down. Yeah, and I mean... Yeah, he fumbled that, but you really can't put that on him. That was just a great play by the defender. I mean, it's a good play. I it's, mean, at the end of the day, I'm always going to put the fumble on, on the running back I mean, yeah, for the most part. But, but, I mean, you come up from behind, you get swiped on it. Yeah. It's not much you can do with that. It's not like it's not like he Latavius Murray did in the preseason. But I, I think that overall, I'm happy with Delvin. Uh, it was a good shake a little bit of the rust, get back into it. Um, you know what? You lose a fumble in a game that you end up winning by eight. Fine. If, if you if we got to pick the few fumbles that he's going to have a year, take it as there. long as that's one of them. Good. We got the W. We move out of there. He learned from it. Um, I, I don't even. It looked like uh, Zim didn't even really say much to him because he knows. I mean, Dalvin knows he can't turn the ball over. Yep. Um, then he had Latavius uh, had eleven for forty two, which is just a shade under four yards a carry, which is good. I thought Latavius looked quick. Um, Cousins scrambled a couple times, so. You know, I, I thought, again, I thought that there was a nice balanced attack and not a horrific defense that we went up against either, you know? so No, you had to force Buckner right yeah. up in the middle. He was causing some havoc. I think he had three and a half sacks, something like that. Yeah, I mean, they got some good, you know, some good players. So, I, yeah, I thought overall... Richard Sherman, you know. The offense, to good. me, took a step in the right direction. And, and for week one, I mean, you know, we, we, we look better than the Bills offense, I'll tell you that much. Um, I think uh, high school offenses look better than the Bills' <laughs> offense, Mike. Yeah. Um, regardless, that's another podcast. Right. Uh, so rolling right in there, because we just kind of touched on it here, uh, the O-line, 
How do you feel they did this this game? Well, the fact that you know Cousins is still alive um, is a good thing. Uh, the fact that I was able to watch the game and not scream in every play like "God, get rid of the ball" or "Duck," you know it. Um, I, I thought for the most part he had time when he dropped back. Sure. Um, so I, I guess to me, I it's a breath. Um, I think we can improve, but I know you know you get Elfline. Um, I'm curious to see how they're going to kind of uh, shake things up a little bit. Obviously, Collins. Um, it hurts a little bit because I do think here as the season went on, Collins was probably going to get some snaps. Uh, Possibly. Now losing him sounds like they already brought in uh, another guy that they, they, they brought in who was fourteen starts or something with Kansas, fourteen games right. with Kansas City last year. So it's a guy with some experience. They, they brought in a guard. Um, I mean, you know, we'll touch on this a bit later, but it's there. There are plenty of options at swing tackle, so don't be concerned with with losing Collins as a swing tackle. We have other options. I'll explain that with the question. Right. So, um, but yeah, I'm the same as you. It, I was at the game, so my vantage point's slightly different. I don't get the the same uh, full breakdown of what's going on with the line, but nothing in it screamed we need a lot of help. No. Right. No, no, no. It's it, it's a good D line coming at you. All right. Sometimes the coverage is just great, and you, you can't get rid of it, and it just happens. Um, but a lot of people were complaining about the Compton grade. PFF gave him an 80.2, highest grade on offense. They were complaining about that. But what you don't see is a lot of times with O-linemen, you don't look at all the plays where they're invisible, where they did their job, you don't yeah. notice them. All you look at is the, the couple sacks he gave up to Buckner. Well, you, you don't look at that his running grade was in the 90s. So, and I think for Compton specifically, he gave up that early sack. Um, you know, it was real early in the game. Right. And I think people have a tendency to uh, lock that into their mind, you know. Absolutely. Ment- it's like mentally, oh, he just gave up a sack. It's the O line. They're so bad. It's, it's called boom. confirmation bias. Yeah. You know? So you'll see what you want to see on him. And then from that, like, that's, I mean, I'm just saying, for even oh, yeah. from my, I remember that, him giving up the sack. It's, it's human nature. Don't remember that much else about it, which probably means the rest of it wasn't that bad, which is exactly what you're saying. So, Absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think the O line. I mean, we won the game. And, it's, and, and that's it's, you know, that's that's where I'm at with it too. Yes, like you said, it can be improved. Yes, when Elfline comes back, do I want a Jones to kick out to left guard in place of Compton? Absolutely. All right, but if we have to roll with this five for the next half year and wait for Elfline to come back, I think we'd be okay. Yep. Just it's just it's just the truth of it. We're not. This isn't a league you say we didn't get up, we didn't give up twelve sacks. All right, right. right. So <clears throat> it's fine. Um, yeah, I think that about covers it for the offense. Pretty much covered every. Ah, uh, the only other thing I would say would be um, Thielen. You know, we there was a little bit of concern about um, just the chemistry uh, with Cousins chemistry. to Thielen. Um, clearly, you saw Cousins to Diggs pretty often in the preseason, and they really seemed to hit it off. And I think that any concern over Thielen can just be pushed to the wayside because uh, Thielen led the way six catches for 102, um, and he, they looked really comfortable together. Uh, so yep. I think that the two receivers, um, both... you know, I think that's what Thielen is. He's he's a safety blanket because his routes are so crisp that you know where he's going to be. Yeah. No, and, and so um, that would be the only other thing uh, offensively that. You know, just of note, we had kind of touched on the fact that Thielen and him didn't really seem to be hitting it off, but uh, as we had kind of previously noted, it probably was not a point of concern. Yeah. So. I, I was not concerned at all. You don't get concerned until it's like week four and he's right. only got two yeah. catches or yep. two targets. So right. um, so let's flip to the other side of the ball here. As we said in the opener, uh, Mac Alexander was ruled out. <clears throat> Who starts in his place? Number 30th overall, Mike Hughes. First round pick. Now, I mean, for those that didn't really pay attention to the game, how would you describe this rookie debut for Mike Hughes? Uh, so, I mean, Hughes obviously had an INT return for a touchdown, which is the flashy play. Um, First rookie to do that in season opener. Well, there you go. For the Vikings, Fun I fact. think, for 
if not ever, for quite a long time, the stat was um, on the screen. So, you know, he had the flashy touchdown, and then I was telling you, uh, I didn't necessarily notice him um, throughout the rest of the game, and to me, that's a sign of, you're probably doing fine. It's just uh, like the O-line. Yep. You know, you're you're not getting beat consistently. Uh, Jimmy G wasn't necessarily targeting you. Uh, so I think that Hughes probably learned a lot, um, you know, game one, and, and that's huge. Uh, so overall, I would probably give him, you know, that low B, you know, type of a... a, a Solid B. And granted, it, you know, I did a little bit of reading into, you know, some of the more advanced stuff here. Uh, just on his overall play, and and um, I think there are definitely some things that it's a, you know it's not to say he's not without flaws. Yeah, but I, I think that it's a good first game for him. Um, if you took away the touchdown, uh, I just think a lot of people would not really notice anything about his game. Which which is like it's like you said, it's what you want. I mean, you don't need to splash to be a good player, right? So um, yeah, I hundred percent. Um, Completely happy with with how he played. I, I love the dig Mike Zimmer had on um, anyone that was clamoring for an old lineman at thirty uh, in his presser. He said, "Yeah, I, I don't know who was saying uh, we should have went with old line with that thirtieth pick, but uh, I'm glad we picked Hughes because he not only played in the nickel in place of Mac Alexander, but when Wayne's went out late in the game, he shifted over to Wayne's spot and played uh, some straight up corner. So." Obviously, he is going to be an integral part of this defense for quite a while if he continues continues on this trajectory. And I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't give up the nickel job back to Mac. Yeah, based on uh, how he plays, maybe in the next couple of games. If yeah, Mac and that's where you know I saw you had said that, and I think that if if Mac is healthy going into Green Bay, um, I do think Mac will probably start. I think uh, I would agree, and I think that that's probably the right move, just because I mean going into Lambo, it's like all right. You know what? You had a touchdown return. You you didn't hurt us last game. You learned a lot of things. Let's have we know we're gonna use you this game, but let's have Max start um, and kind of go from there. But yeah, um, you know he had three pass deflections. It looks like he had the INT. He had three tackles. I think he got involved. Um, he got involved out there and and uh, wasn't wasn't afraid to get involved. No, and Jimmy G. It, you know, by, a lot of people think he's one of the better quarterbacks in the league, which you know, as you and I said, is a, probably a bit preposterous just because of the short. Right now, it doesn't necessarily even have a full. Well, he doesn't have an NFL season uh, really to go off of. Uh, good for him; he got paid. Uh, but yeah, I think that it's a good it's a good opener for Hughes. I mean, what people need to really stop and think about is is think about all these other corners that we've had that have been early round picks and they either haven't panned out or they've taken time to pan out i mean trey wayne people <laughs> chris, are, cook. Yeah, chris <clears throat> cook um you know even even trey trey took some time you know and and um mac or uh, mike hughes has more interceptions in one game and chris cook had his entire career right just, so i i think that if you're trying to tell me that you're concerned about hughes's game and and you know the stuff that you don't really see uh, unless you know what you're looking for. I mean, I, I think you're just looking for stuff to kind of nitpick on at that point. Right. Um, and that's fine when you take care of business at home and you win by eight and it should have been more. There, you, You're going to have a tendency to do that. Uh, you can always improve. But I think that I'm, I'm happy with Hughes' game. I'm not going to rave and give him the A+, plus, but I, I certainly think that he did what was asked of him. And Everything I wanted to see out of a first-round pick this game, it, it didn't... It didn't make me like think we got a huge deal, but it didn't make me think that we wasted the pick. Right. And if you don't waste the first round pick, if he pans out and is a legit starter for you, perfect. Right. That's what you want. Um, lead this into a couple of coverage issues that might have been exposed. Uh, kind of what, what, what's, your, what's your thoughts on this? Is this something that uh, players just completely failed or is that schematic assignment missing or what's going on there? Uh, I think it was probably a missed assignment to be honest with you um, you know they had I think two or three plays in a row there where they kind of went to the flats and guys were wide open um, I was not happy at that moment no yeah I mean and we'll have to rewatch a little bit and see what went on there uh, but I have a feeling someone messed up from a schematic standpoint uh, there's some handoff that was missed there when the, in yeah, the cover. Yeah, and, and I mean, you're going to have plays where the offense is going to beat the defense. They, you know, it, 
This is a battle back and forth. Um, and sometimes it doesn't even matter. You could cover completely perfectly and yep. still get beat. Exactly. So uh, I, I think that they will learn from it. Uh, we know that next week you're going to have an offensive kind of mastermind at the helm who likes to change plays. And Mike McCarthy? We'll find the open uh, receiver, uh, which Jimmy G luckily missed a couple times for us. Otherwise, this game... You know, might have been a little bit of a different story. So uh, I don't know what I, I mean. Being at the game, I'm sure it might have been a little difficult for you to actually break that down. But um, yeah, some of them were, were fairly obvious. There was something that was completely missed. Um, like I said, a couple of them. There, the hole was just way too wide. Someone missed missed a handoff or missed a, their assignment on that. Um, but yeah, it's a lot more difficult to to really see how coverages are breaking down when you don't have um, that overhead view that you kind of get yeah. uh, on the TV. But um, you know, like, like I said, it, it, the way we played, putting up four takeaways, I mean, at some point, something's got to break a little bit. Right. If we, I would have been a lot more concerned if we would have lost this game with a plus three turnover ratio. But we didn't. We closed it out the way we needed to with Harrison Smith interception right there at the end. Yeah. I mean, you can't ask for more. No. You really can't. Um, oh, let's see. What else we got here, Mikey? I mean, Harrison probably could have, you know, went down when he intercepted that ball instead of carry it one-handed and try to re- advance, but that's a that's He was, a he was eating time off the clock. Yeah. Anyways. What, you eating like that? No. Why not? Because he's, he's got the ball out one-handed running around. <laughs> Too many bad things have happened to me over the years, okay? <laughs> um, I guess to wrap up our kind of our defensive... Uh, conversation here um d line pressure that was something that uh man we're used to seeing reasonable pressure but it seemed like we were just on them all day yeah i mean the d line pressure was substantial um i think they ended up with only two sacks uh total from the d line obviously harry came in on a blitz and got one um but it felt like we had more than the two or three sacks so um you know, Again, was, that's like I said in, in the preview show. Jimmy G's one of those guys that'll get it out quick. Yeah, and if you can speed up his his processing, or speed speed up the time he has to process. Yeah, that's where you get some of those errant throws. That's why we had three picks. Well, and it, it's gonna be it's gonna be a cog for our entire defense. The faster you make a quarterback make a decision, um, you know, maybe it throws off routes. Maybe it, uh, you know, maybe someone misses. A block, etc. You know, it's yep. um, it's just going to be more beneficial for the this this vaunted defense. Uh, so, I was telling you, you know, we were talking about uh, the pressure here before the show, and I was just like, well, yeah, you know, we got pressure, um, but it's just something that I've come to expect, and you don't realize if you are a fan of another team that doesn't have a, a front four like this. <laughs> yeah. This would be like, oh my god, the, you know, this is one of the better games from a pressure standpoint we've ever had, and, and this this is a low key kind of well, I mean, it's good. Of we, game. we got pressure. Yeah. We didn't we didn't bring him down, um, maybe as much as I would have wanted, but yeah, we, certainly we, we it was took a him huge, off his spot. As it was they a say. huge factor. Yeah. Um, so pressure is going to be there. It's going to need to be there next week. Uh, you're going to have a a banged up Aaron Rodgers at minimum. Um, so. I swear, if Aaron Roger, if uh, Anthony Barr hurts him and takes him out again, I'm pretty sure there's going to have to be a rest on all the death, death threats he's going to get. See, and I'm going to be at that game, so you know, I would, I'm almost hoping that doesn't happen. Um, You know, I might advise taking like a flak jacket or something. Well, you I was going to wear my Barr jersey. It. Ooh. Well, you know what? It was it was good podcasting with you while we were here. Um, we have one more episode, the, the preview, and then yeah, after that, yeah. you might not make it out alive. Yeah. So we'll see how that works out for you. Right. <laughs> I'm pulling for you. <laughs> um, I guess one last talking point on the defense. Um, curse in there versus Iloka when we were running three safety sets. Yeah. Uh, what do you kind of make of this? My, my thought is it's kind of a system knowledge versus player ability thing yeah to me that's what it screams um because i mean it's hard to you're hard to, to tell me that aloka is not more talented than curse 
I don't, I don't know. We, I've seen this before where guys that get signed a little bit later, um, but the argument there would be that he, he knows Zim's schemes, right? He's played with Zim before um, in Cincinnati. You know, and Zim even said when he came over, he's like, he knew X percent. It was something like 80 percent right. of the <clears throat> scheme. So I don't know if it's, and I wouldn't think it's a conditioning issue. So I, I don't know. That one I don't really know. It kind of threw me off a little bit. But uh, I was probably, it must have been close to halftime. Um, I was talking with another buddy of mine who we were kind of watching the game uh, together and, and, and talking about it almost on a play-by-play basis as we were going and I was like have you seen him yet and and uh he hadn't so yeah I don't know I mean maybe uh, I don't, did Zim get asked about it at all today did you see in the, the uh, press I didn't no? see in the after the game presser I haven't checked for today's okay um so yeah I, if it comes up sure we'll, we'll take a look at it but um yeah I don't know exactly what to make of it the only thing I can think of is it's it's either player chemistry or just some of the nuances that he wasn't picking up yet or hadn't really gelled with yet versus curse has been on the system for what three years now so yeah. i i don't know it's a little strange though a little strange if it happens again like that i would i'd put more of a question to it like what's what's going on here why is he not starting why like he's got to be better than curse so what's going on there right. i don't know maybe they're saving him for rotational purposes or something i don't know um we'll find out um i guess on the uh san fran side of the ball Obviously, not having McKinnon, McKinnon really uh, took them back a bit. Yeah. Um, didn't really make them as dynamic as they probably wanted to be coming into this game. No, and then and then they lose Goodwin, uh, their top receiver, um, relatively early in the game. And he tried to come back, tried to come back. I think he did actually come back for a play or two, and then he had to come back out. Um, so they were really down their two most explosive offensive weapons. Uh, and then, you know, Kittle was a problem at times. He had five for 90, uh, very easily could have had six for 150 if Jimmy G would have hit him on the one that he was streaking wide open. He also had uh, Pettis that had a couple of nice grabs. Yeah, Pettis had a nice catch. That touchdown grab was really nice. So, uh, but they're, they're a hurting unit. You know, we talked about it. They were losing McKinnon is huge, especially this close to the season, um, and then they, they had some injuries yesterday, too. You know, they, they lost a couple guys, and, and I think that they're a hurting unit right now, as are a few other teams in the NFL. Carolina, uh, we didn't touch on that. Carolina lost a few more players. Um, so injuries, unfortunately, are part of the NFL, and, and I think... However, if, if, you're, if you're someone listening to this and you're a 49ers fan, or if you're also a 49ers fan and a Vikings fan, you know, these guys put up a fight all the way through the end. Yeah, no, it's a good... So, I mean, you got good things to look forward to from this team. I think the team, you know, we said in the preview show for the, not the preview show for the, you know, the NFL, that we both like the Niners and the direction they're going, but we both felt maybe they're a year or two away. Um, let's get a few more pieces. Let's get a healthy McKinnon. Um, let's maybe get a true, you have. let's get a true one receiver to pair with Goodwin um, and continue to add another piece or two to that defense. And I think that, yeah, then, then you are talking about a good football team, especially in a division with a lot of uncertainty. Um, Seattle losing yesterday. Arizona getting killed yesterday. Um, you know, so it's 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 one of those things where... The Rams where, getting crushed by Gruden today. Yeah, we'll see if that happens. But <laughs> um, Niners still headed in the right direction. I just, I think this year is going to be tough for him, uh, certainly if these injuries continue to pile up. But Yep, death by a thousand cuts, usually typically with injuries. Yeah. All right, so let's bring up the old Twitter questions here. Start with the, uh, the O line question. Um, starts off. When does Elfline come back? Uh, so we'll start off with that little bit from Eric on the Twitter. Uh, so Elfline, you know, I'm hoping next week, but honestly, I could see anywhere between now and like week four. I don't see why you bring him back for Buffalo. Well, if yeah, if he's out, if he's out versus if he Green play Bay this week, I think it's week maybe four. maybe you keep him, you put him active if he's ready to go right. and just short, have him short week though too. That week we play that Thursday for right Buffalo after Buffalo or after Buffalo, yeah. So I just if he doesn't well, play no, week no, two, well, here's 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 what I'm saying there. So with with if he's out versus Green Bay, but he's ready to go for Buffalo, you activate him for Buffalo, but you don't play him. He's he's your reserve uh, center at that point. Just just to save him up for that next Thursday, right? 
Because, you know, you don't know what's going to happen with the old line. No. But I say you would just start him, you'd put him as your reserve, and you sit someone else on the O line as an inactive. Um, so I'm hoping this week he'll be back, um, but I could easily see it being later. I could easily see them trying to take their time with it. I think. <sighs> but it, I, 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 I would agree, in, though, if it's not this week, it's week four. Coming in, I was going to say this week, um, go, or sorry, before this week that just happened, um, I was going to say Green Bay, week two, he's going to be back. Um, right now, I think it's week four, and I don't know. That's that's me reading in between the lines a little bit, but then also just thinking logically, you know, with with Buffalo in the short week, whatever. I think it's going to be week four. Well, on the same token, though, you you'd almost want them to get in now and start getting that chemistry back um, yeah, ahead of it, that week four and week five matchup. You yeah. really don't want to be shuffling your guys ahead of that Rams D line. You kind of want to have them experienced. Oh, out and then you get the point. Eagles too. I mean, they're both. So yeah, I mean. But I don't that's, know. that's the only counting argument there. So so we're going two or four, but not three. <laughs> two or four, probably not three, um, unless like I said, unless they want that week of continuity for the Rams. We'll we'll see. Um, God, it's that's such a tough question to answer because we haven't heard anything about it since they started practicing. So that's a mystery. Um, it's a little bit of a mystery. We'll we'll get some more clarity in the next couple of days as they're they're getting back to practicing. I think today they typically have the day off. Tomorrow they'll, they'll when, do a Wednesday practice. Wednesday will be the big. Uh, um, you know, the injury report yep. Wednesday will be the big one. So. so look at the injury report and actually look at, for the portions that are open to the public, who is he with, who is he playing with, you know. Mm-hmm. What, what's going on with that whole whole trajectory? Because if he's playing with the ones on, like, Wednesday, if he's practicing with the ones on Wednesday, then pretty safe bet he's going to be playing uh, week two. So we'll keep an eye on that. That's not fully decided. It's... It's Zimmer and injuries. We're never going to get a clear answer till Sunday game time actives. So, um, second question is O'Neill the new swing tackle at both tackle positions? Um, I'm assuming since Collins is now uh, out. Uh, so, yes, I would say I don't see another tackle on a roster that's that's of the caliber that O'Neill can provide. I, um, yeah, and because we put Collins on the IR. Uh, don't forget that we have Remmers, who used to be right tackle. So worst case, this is how it would break down. If everything were to hit the fan, we were to lose about four offensive linemen. Um, if Hill were to go down, O'Neal is your, your immediate backup right tackle. If O'Neal would go down in that, in that position, Remmers would kick out to right tackle. You'd bring in a guard replacement. All right. If Remmers goes down with all that, well, you're pretty much just going to forfeit the game anyway because you're going to be screwed. Um if Reef goes down, that's probably going to be either O'Neal or Hill, whichever one they feel is better suited at that left tackle. Um, sometimes it's it's insanely difficult to swap positions when you're in the game flow, so that would be kind of a wild card. But bringing in a guard that we did, I don't think it reduces our position flexibility by much by losing Collins. I just, I just don't think it does. Um, so obviously we already signed a guard. This question was put in a little bit before we signed the guy. Um, what's our opinion on the run game or lack thereof yesterday? This is from Paul. Well, um, you know, I think lack thereof needs to be taken with a grain of salt. Uh, Dalvin coming back from missing the entire, well, not the entirety of last season, but, but basically missing, you know, over three quarters of the season. Uh, new offense. I thought Delvin looked good. I thought he looked explosive. Um, obviously, we weren't afraid to use him. So, I guess I wouldn't worry about the lack of statistics. Uh, you know, Delvin was under three. Uh, Latavius was closer to four. I thought he looked good. Um, but it was kind of a, a weird game from, from the running standpoint, you know, Clearly, Cousins was trying to get uh, get going a little bit. I think he threw 36 times. Um, I don't know that we're necessarily used to a QB throwing 36 times uh, over the last few years. I think it's right. typically a little bit lower than that. So um, well, we still had to combine 116 yards rushing. So. Yeah, I mean they, they you know they got over 100. Obviously, some of the scrambles from from Cousins helped that out quite a bit. But uh, I guess I would not be concerned at all about the the running backs 
Um, if you want to talk about the line, and, and especially as we get more and more moving pieces here from the line and making sure they're blocking and doing the things downfield that they need to do, um, that's one thing to be concerned about. But the actual running backs, I thought Dalvin and Latavius both looked good. Yeah. Um, it, for me, it's it's not a big concern. It's it's kind of you're just starting out slow. You're, like you said, new quarterback, new offensive coordinator. Uh, they're going to implement those wrinkles that get those guys sprung for a lot more yards. Right, we're gonna see that Dalvin we saw the, the first three games of last year. Oh, I, I thought he looked. I thought he looked just no, as good no, 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 stat sheet wise. Yeah, we're, we're we're gonna see that happen. Okay, and so we just gotta be patient a little, a little bit with it. It's there's a lot of moving pieces right now. A lot of things are still trying to jail, get comfortable. So um, I, I wouldn't be concerned about that. I think that's I think that's coming and it should be around just fine. Um, let's see, other part of the question, Cousins debut. We talked about that. Um, looked good. Uh, good pocket awareness, but he couldn't close out the game in the fourth. What do you make of that, Mike? Cousins? Yes. Um, I don't know. It, I, I don't make... So that, that's been the knock, right? Kind of late game situations, especially two-minute drill if he needs to do whatever. Um, I know they're probably not going to like this answer, but I'm kind of giving the pass on this one because it's a new... Again, it's a new offense. It's a new team. There's a lot of new moving pieces. It's a new O line every day right now. Um, I guess I, I'm going to give him the pass. Uh, if all of a sudden weekly you see, oh, well, I'm giving him a pass, but we keep winning football games. All right, fine. We'll have to address it at some point in time. Like, what sure. do we do if we get behind? He needs to win, but and he needs to pull it out. Um, I guess I, I'm not concerned about that right now. We still won this football game. Dalvin doesn't fumble. Uh, it's I don't even know. Different. If Dalvin doesn't fumble, this question doesn't come into us. Let's put it that way, you know. Sure, that's. I think. I think that's fair, because then we're up by at least another touchdown. You'd figure. Yeah. Uh, and it's not even a close out the game at that point because you'd be running a lot more, you know, instead of trying to pick up those third down. I don't know. Two forty four and two. Um, I think it's a good learning. They're going to go back, look at the tape, figure out what went wrong late. Well, um, you know, Judd. We're going to go back and look at the tape. We're not going to rest on our laurels. Classic uh, Les Frazier impression there if you ever watched some of his pressers. Yeah, it's, you know, I, and I know that that's kind of this cliched or whatever answer, but... I, I just, at this point, that's all you can do. Again, I think we're almost nitpicking to say, why can't he close a game out when it's a game you do win by eight points? And I know that Harry is ultimately who closed it out, you know, with right. that... Well, it's the defense entirely, but... But, um, but it, I mean, counterpoint to that, your defense is your strength. Yeah. Well, maybe. Some people I think mean, that the offense is going to be really damn good this year. You know, and I, I wouldn't call those people completely crazy, but, you know, if you need to close out a game, I'm sorry, I'm trusting the defense more at this point because that's that's what they are. Yeah, if you're so, telling yeah. me would I rather have... Well, But, I mean, I think most teams are going to go with this, but would I rather have... A three-point lead and need my defense to make a stop or be down two and have my offense have to get into field goal range, yes, I'm taking this defense to make a stop. Yep. Um, now, that's not saying that I don't – I mean, I, with the playmakers we have, I'm trusting that Cousins and company could, could do can that get us points. into yep. range and that, you know, Carlson's going to bring the rain from whatever distance. But uh, Wait, the rain's down from Africa? <laughs> also, Carlson, kicker watch, can you give me the update? You were there. What was he, two for two? Uh, well, he was for sure one. Oh, yeah, what do we have? How many extra points? Uh, three then, right? Yeah. So yeah. Three for three extra points, two for one two. For one. No, one, no, for one. one for one. No, one for one field goal. I'm sorry. 40, Math is hard. 47 yarder, I think it was. I think it was like, like a 42, actually. Because I, I remembered it was like it matched exactly what well, uh, it right here. Kai missed. It's true. You know, I could just continue to look at this. When was that field goal? I don't know. Why didn't... Okay, now you just... Okay, you know what? It, they're highlighted in green, Mike. Okay? It should be easy to find. Carlson. 48. Okay, 48. Field goal. You're there right. you go. See, he's got it. And I mean, it was three quarters of the way up the upright. Oh, okay. Just so you know. I, I, I couldn't see that. So I have no way to verify if you're just pulling my leg right now or no. not. But, no. Um, in either case, yeah, I guess that is what it is. You know, I'm gonna love him until he costs us another Super Bowl trip because he's gonna miss it in the NFC Championship oh game. God, because have a little faith. You know, it's it's hashtag Vikings. But well, let me about this. I know this is a little bit off uh, script here, but um, 
the punting game. Uh, we had one very atrocious punt. Um, now, he did have a couple other solid punts. So, um, anything to... Is it just something to watch? Or do you kind of say, ah, you know, one bad punt, nothing to worry about, and, you know, we're on to Green Bay? Um, right now, the special teams coming off the preseason and how they played, and that one bad pump scares the absolute crap out of me. Okay. Because we're relatively sound in offense right now. Our defense is probably the soundest in the league. If there's a spot where we can be hurt right now, it's special teams. And that punt is a potential to swing momentum and break your back. Like, I, 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 don't, I didn't see any re- replay angles on that punt. There's anything wrong with a snap or anything like that, but that that was just atrocious. You give him the ball at like midfield, right? You can't do that. I, 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 you can't do that. There's there's nothing else to say. Oh, this is a fun update. Oh gosh. Sam Darnold just made his first throw. Pick, Pick six. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ooh, ooh, slay. Uh, I don't know. I don't have that. But first pick, pick six. Um, Should have kept Teddy. Uh, last uh, parting question here would be um, Kyle Rudolph, someone who I thought was actually going to be a big factor, uh, and not saying he couldn't be in the future here, but um, two targets, I told you, possibly three, because I do think he was targeted on the Treadwell uh, drop ball early. But uh, now the one target was a nice touchdown catch. But, sure. um, you know, Cousins is always Jordan Reed and, and – uh, his tight ends have really thrived, um, and obviously Di Filippo. You had you had Ertz and guys that have thrived under under his system as well as tight ends. So um, everything seemed to be pointing towards a big year and big games from uh, Kyle Rudolph. And it, you know, he, I think he had one for eight in a score yesterday. So um, is that just a product of they took what was available from the receivers, or what do you think about that? You know, I think it could have been a, a couple faceted issue. I think I think one was okay, you're kind of it's either your tight end or your running back that's your relief valve, right? In situations where you're pressured, you need to dump it down quick. One of those guys is usually in the flats or a crossing out. Um, so I think part of it was them trying to re reintegrate Cook and give him some nice, easy completions to, to grab, just to get him used to that contact, used to that cutting, used to that quick acceleration. Um, so there might have been more of an emphasis to get him on some of those plays as, as your, your relief valve. And then some of it might have just been um, their linebackers were being really good in coverage and taking away Rudolph. So he, he just that just wasn't there. So he, he stopped looking, looking at him as often because he just wasn't there. So he, I could see it being multifaceted like that where it's maybe a lot of the plays was more designed towards, towards Cook. And then some of it was the ones that were designed for Rudolph just weren't there, or Treadwell tried to make a play on the ball when it really wasn't supposed to go to him anyway. Okay, that's, I mean that's that's a tough question to ask, and you know a couple more games if that continues, that trend continues. Yeah. Then it's it's I think it's a more a lot more interesting question, but yeah, right now first game, like we said, so many moving parts, it's hard to gauge right now what this offense is going to look like. What 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 the weakness is, where we need to improve right now. It's just a lot. I tell you what, I am uh, salivating thinking of digs and dealing against those rookie corners next uh, next week. It's going to be a bloodbath. But, whew. I'm excited. Get excited, folks. I'll be there. Get excited. He'll be there. He might not make it out alive. So uh, <laughs> uh, send your thoughts and prayers to at musky underscore Mike. Yeah. Or, or, or I mean, I'll relay them at, yeah. at the Mach 7. Right. This is Scolders Podcast, Scolders.com. You might be looking for a uh, new co-host. I, yeah, I might be. So, you know what? Send in some tape. We'll, we'll review yeah. it. You know, I'm not going to rest on my laurels here if I need to get a new co- you know, co-host here. I wouldn't expect anything else, you know? You know, show must go on, you know? Um, but yeah, check us out. Scolders.com. You're probably listening to us also on the uh, Climb in the Pocket Network. We're over there as well. Take a listen. They got some good stuff going on over there, uh, but I think it's going to wrap it us wrap it up for us tonight. Anything you got uh, left to add? No, I'm excited. Uh, we'll have the preview show coming up this week. That's always a fun show. Um, we'll see if we can get someone from the dark side over and, and maybe uh... try to talk some sense into them. Yeah, because they probably think they're going to roll this game, but no, they're not. Yeah. So, 
yeah, that'll do it for us. Uh, until next time. Bye.